in this episode. I hope you can stomach one more episode of messing around with the Lincoln Mark 7 rear end and five leg swap for Project Blow Fairmont. Watch at your own risk. Welcome to the channel. My name is Grant Tommy. This is my channel, Straight Six Man. Where I like to focus on budget minded, relatable, creative builds. A little something I like to call offbeat hot rodding. And while we are working on Project Low Fairmont today, we do begin this episode a little different than most with the trip to the parts store. Because you see, over the past week, after getting the rear calipers rebuilt as I started to try to reassemble them, put them on the Lincoln Mark 7 rear end, I encountered two seized up guide pins. And over the course of the week, I kept hitting them up with, if you caught the live stream, I, I mentioned some of this, but um, I kept hitting them with PB blaster, vice grips, chisel, hammer, whatever it took to extract these. In the process, um, both one more than the other uh, are basically distorted because of how seized up they were, trying to crank on it with a uh, breaker bar and a socket for one. Um, it just sort of like torqued it enough. Let's see, maybe you can see here. To bend it. So these are not gonna fly uh, after spending all that time rebuilding those calipers. So we're headed to O'Reilly's right now to see if we can get two new ones. And so, exactly as I feared, uh, O'Reilly's did not have that obscure of a part in stock. Uh, however, I do appreciate the employee behind the counter. He basically went to rockauto.com, found what I was looking for, and we kind of, you know, without words, kind of just nodded our head like, all right, I know where I need to go. So, but anyway, I wanted to start with that trip because uh, I knew that was going to shape this episode. But first, let's get the... Um, Let's get the Mustang out so I can get to work, tell you what what we're gonna do here. Um, but stick around to the end, guys. I still, I owe you um, a budget update on the car. Um, it's gonna be a little different than usual, but uh, stick around till the end for not only the budget update, but kind of a, a sense of what to expect for the next upload as well. Okay, so this is what's going to prompt the uh, unconventional budget update, um, but like I said, we are going to wait towards the end of the episode for what's in the box, at least, maybe not the end to end, but uh, further on. So uh, yeah, I want to get the differential under the car today, and the reason why I wanted those uh, caliper guide pins was because... After last week's episode was over, I promptly went to O'Reilly's and got the rear rotors turned. And so, yeah, over the course of the week, I was trying to get these guys, um, you know, since they were rebuilt from last episode, try to get them installed. But yes, those guide pins hung me up on the caliper brackets. Um, now, luckily, what I'm going to do, since uh, these, and these are, I've looped these up, you know, I bought the special grease. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just, luckily, this is the driver's side. So I'm going to get the driver's side all done, and then we are going to see about getting these back on that I took off a couple episodes ago. Um, as you saw, I, you know, shaved down the, the shocks. And then again, back to that box, there's something else in there that's going to help us get this under there. So again, the reason why I made note, or why it's significant that the driver's side um, is okay to go is because obviously with the car up on jack stands, 
it's I've got no space on that side of the car to work on it. So I'd rather assemble the whole brake assembly here on the jack stands and get that wrapped up. Um, whereas on the passenger side, I've got all this room on this side of the car. The only thing left preventing me from wrapping up the passenger driver's side is uh, I got to resurface the pads that came with this rear end. Um, there's some scoring on it. Um, and, you know, since I just got these, the rotors turned, um, that, and then kind of liberally clean it with brake clean, uh, just to try to get as many contaminants out of it. Uh, I did this on the passenger side during the week. It seemed to work out great. Uh, I'm using 320 grit. And because uh, really, honestly, running your finger across, I can't feel any uh, ridges. Uh, you can definitely see them, but this seems to do the trick. So um, let's get the, get the driver's side buttoned up and uh, hopefully we can make some real magic happen in this episode. So again, if there wasn't this much material left on the pads, I'd probably buy new ones, but it seems like there's still way too much life on these just to throw them out. So um, I feel like for a budget build, for uh, fixing this up, I feel like this was the right call. I'm sure some of you guys have differing opinions. Feel free to leave those opinions in the comments below. Um, I can't wait to read them, hear them, uh, but anyway. Uh, Again, if it wasn't for uh, the rear brakes, also only do about 20% of the work, maybe I'd feel different, but uh, I, I'd have no issues doing, doing this. With that driver's side rear caliper done, um, it's time to open this box. And what I've been hinting at this whole time, why I'm gonna do a budget update and why it's gonna be a little unconventional is because if you've been following this for quite some time, you know this is a $4,000 budget car and I've been trying to give you a budget update of things I buy, but I don't do it until I actually put the parts on the car. However, today this box I purchased with a gift card I got for my birthday, $100 gift card to Jigs. So honestly, the only thing out of pocket is I ended up spending $11.70 for this whole box. And what I need for this episode is this Royal Purple gear oil for the rear end. I went with Max Gear 7590 weight and I did because this is a track lock rear end, you guys might be saying, oh, did, don't, hope you didn't forget about the friction modifier. Uh, but according to Purple, Royal Purple's website, uh, you do not need friction modifier with this stuff. So um, that's what we need for this episode. So to finish out that $100 or to get the best bang for my buck and free shipping and everything, I also got an adjustable proportioning valve, which is what I will need for the rear disc brake setup, as well as valve cover gaskets, um, which will be advantageous for when we reinstall the, well, not reinstall, when we install the GT40 P heads that you saw um, up here when I went to uh, get those done. So since this is going to be hard to divvy up that one, that $11.70 for all of this, we're just gonna go ahead and take that out of the budget now. So with that, let's do a budget update. When this episode started, uh, and forgive me, I do have a cheat sheet, uh, we were at $1,173.61. Uh, all of the parts and pieces for the rear caliper um, rebuild kits, now that's going to be sands, the guide pins I'm gonna have to buy uh, from rockauto.com, but 
basically what you've seen to date installed. Um, again, I had a $30 gift card for my birthday, a cash card from my mom, uh, her parents, both of them, not just my mom. Um, so out of pocket, I only ended up spending $33.65. Like I said, there was the $11.70 from the goodie box from Jigs. And then the turned, uh, turning the rotors last week ended up costing, um, in addition to, I bought that uh, brake, brake grease that you're supposed for those guide pins. Um, that total cost $29.48. Since all of this money I have sitting in a savings account specifically for the project car, I did pick up eight cents in interest <laughs> this last quarter. So that brings our new total down. What is left of my original $4,000 um, budget is down to $1,098.86. So, anyway, just wanted to give you guys that update, but um, let's get the rear diff on and let's fill this back up with gear oil. In the previous episode, when I uh, took the diff cover off initially, I did clean, spend some time cleaning up the housing uh, from the old silicone sealant. However, I did not do the diff cover itself, so that's what you see me doing right here. So it is four o'clock, which is my normal pickup time, which I think is what I'm going to start to do. Um, the instructions on the, the RTV say to finger tight and everything, um, and then uh, let it set up for an hour before you torque it down to the proper specs. Now I did find for an 8.8, .8, uh, two different torque specs, one for an aluminum diff cover, one for a steel, like I have. So 33 foot pounds is what I'm going to torque these down to. Uh, here in probably like not even an hour um, but and then from there we will fill it up uh, from the front side the fill plug is right here and um, I would love to store this under the car I, I'm, not, I'm gonna run out of time I'm not gonna be able to get it up under the car again um, but the reason why that it was an objective and a goal so important is because as I mentioned earlier in the episode um, the coming episode, we will feature um, a little mock-up 
akin to what you have seen before. If you want to know what I'm talking about, the best way to know, if you don't want to wait two days, is to follow me on Instagram. Of course, my handle is at straight six fans, spelled the same way as it is here on YouTube. So uh, always a reminder to go follow me over there. Otherwise, hang out and uh, wait for the next episode to drop. Uh, I did make a trip up to Council Bluffs, Iowa this past weekend to go obtain what it is I'm going to show you in the next episode. So, of course, that's as good of a teaser as I can do. Um, but yeah, that... Oh, one last thing I will mention about the, that 33 foot-pound torque spec. There is a torque sequence uh, that you want you to do. It's basically you start in the top uh, about 1 o'clock position on the diff cover and then you just jump across almost uh, all the way down to from 1 o'clock down to like 7 o'clock and we skip up. Anyway, you can find those. I will leave a link to the torque pattern PDF that I found uh, in the description below. You can also find a link to my Spreadshirt store below for you to pick up a straight 6 fan Pistons tee. It's a great way to support my channel. And if you don't like this design, of course I have one for you Mopar guys. That's Slant 6 inspired. Um, reminder, looks like Jason Carr, old car auto guy. And I figured out how to live stream again in the post uh, Google Hangouts world. So Car Guy and 6 fan show this Thursday. Otherwise, like comment, share, subscribe. That'll do it for this episode. And until next time, peace out.